Okay, we're going to feed these bees today. bees are hungry. They ate up all the syrup. This is one-to-one -one sugar, and sugar and water by weight. This is a feeder. This is a queen excluder. It keeps the queen from getting above this level. This and this are brood boxes. This is a base right here. The back slides out here got a screen with a drowning pit of oil in there so if mites fall in through a little screen, an eighth inch screen, they drown. Mites are beetles. The entrance is over there. There's a little slot right here that the bees can climb up through here, climb over and drink here. This is all screened up. They're in there just slurping, slurping that sugar water up. You can see little eighth inch dowel rods maybe down in the bottom. Those are floaters to keep the bees from drowning. That's the entrance to the hive. Can you put the lid back on? Yeah, we can put the lid on. Barbara's going to put the lid back on now. You got this other part in there. Yeah, just carefully go ahead and take it loose and set it on top gently. Mm. No, no, I want you to take the inner inner yeah. cover loose. I'm trying. Okay. Try not to squash too many bugs. And that notch goes to the front. There must have been some in there. So Barbara's replacing the uh, inner what's called the inner cover which is really just a lid and a ventilation hole what you got one there it just mm -hmm. gently it'll come down it'll move mm -hmm. yep looks good there's one right here let me flick him out yeah there's still okay go ahead and put it down now yeah. we try not to squash too many bugs Now Barbara's putting the uh, what's called the telescoping cover on, which fits. It actually fits over the hive. I don't mm -hmm. believe is it seated level. Yeah. Yep. And it can be slid forward or backward to allow that little notch that you notice in the top of the inner cover to be covered up or not to block ventilation or allow it. We've got it shoved toward the front so that there's ventilation. Now we're just going to latch the lid back on, so I'm going to help Barbara do that. In fact, I'm going to move the camera to the other side.
tightening them. Isn't that tight? Yeah, I think it is. Okay, good. Up. <coughs> so that's that one. We fed those bees and they'll eat that up. Now we're going to do the same thing on this side. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it'll loosen now. Now go all the way back. There you go. Now pull up. There you go. That's, That's loose. Nice. Just ease it toward the rear. That's almost enough. I'm going to help her. Okay. Oh. Wow. That's, that's fine. Don't worry. Just ease it. Set it on the table here, hon. Now these bees here, a bunch of them are sitting on top of the inner hive cover. Oh, there's my food. <laughs> get under here and see. They're a little upset. Oh, oh, there's, a bu there's a bunch of bees in there. Well, there is still some liquid, looks like, in there. That's a good thing. I hope we've got enough in the other one. Go ahead and, yeah, we do. Go ahead. All right, I'm holding it. Yeah, all right. Just be sure and put half on each side. Mm -hmm. We're trying not to drown them. Now what we have here is a feeder with a slot running forward to back on this one instead of side to side. And on each side there's a raft of little pine strips. That's so the bees can uh, walk around on that raft and not uh, get drowned. Not get drowned in the syrup. This is uh, eight pounds of sugar in these two, four pounds in each hive. We were talking to a, another big guy up the road here who was talking about ordering two, a, a ton, 2,000 pounds of sugar to feed his bees. And I said, man, these bees are eating us out of house and home. The bees are really quite docile. Yeah, they can sting if you mash them, but uh, they'd rather not because they know it's the end of their life. Apparently they know by instinct that, uh, that a sting is going to do them in. So far we've not gotten a single sting in the uh, 10 or since the 3rd or whatever we put these bees in here. What you going to do? I wanted to get, it looks like this one out here. Okay, yeah. Head. Yeah, we've got a drowned bee in here. We're going to get out. Use the other end of the hook to pick him up and throw him out. Got a bee that turned vertical. Looks like it drowned and had too much, too much uh, syrup on it. Couldn't breathe, probably. Okay. these guys. Yeah, we're just going to turn this uh, inner cover. I got to turn it over. Yeah, I? yeah, turn it over and uh, put the notch to the front. Mm -hmm. You can see we're kind of moving somewhat slowly. There's one bee just dragging backwards and he'll go in. Mm -hmm. Yep, there you go. And there's one on the side here. Let me mm -hmm. watch out. Let me flick it loose. All right. Good going. Yeah, so we're, we're kind of trying to not get them too bugged. Mm -hmm. Get them upset. They're in there building a comb, we presume, in these two boxes down here and here. We presume, we haven't looked, we'll look next week to see if the queen's actually in there laying eggs, which turn into uh, larvae in three days. And then um, once they're in there, there's larvae from the time. From the time they're laid eggs, once they hatch out in three days and the larvae are there, all the, the, work, the other worker bees attending are feeding them uh, honey and uh, pollen and stuff they've regurgitated. Some of it's, sometimes it'll be called royal jelly. Um, 
that really aids the development of the larva into uh, to start um, building a, a cocoon which it'll build and uh, once it's built that cocoon around that larvae the uh, worker bees will cap that cell in uh, about another 14 days I think that larva will pupate convert from a larvae into a pupa and from a pupa into a, a full grown bee and then it'll start chewing its way out of the cell and as soon as it starts chewing its way out the other workers will see what's going on and they'll help it to get out of there and once it's out they kind of uh, apparently kind of orient that new worker to what it's going to be doing for a while which is kind of helping inside the hive for a bit now so far we don't have any new bees every bee here is a bee yeah, every bee that, it, that we see here came in the package of three pound bees. And there's not been, in, they have not been in here long enough to uh, to grow new bees yet. It takes uh, about 21, 22 days for those bees to go from a laid egg to a developed worker and a new bee. A new bee. So uh, it'll be around the 24th. So it's kind of like a race against time that uh, if these bees don't start hatching new ones, then the hive will start dying off. Go around to the front and you'll see there's more. Okay, I'm going to move around to the front again on this hive. Barbara says there's more bees up here. I'm going to zoom in. Okay, these bees are... Apparently the word got out that we were up there doing something. So a few more of the bees are coming out, looking around, but for the most part, these bees are returning from uh, foraging trips, and I'm looking to see if they've got pollen on their hind legs or not. And I'm not seeing any with pollen, or not much, but they need to be having pollen, but they don't necessarily need to bring pollen until they've got lots of cells lay, uh, built out of a uh, honeycomb. The sugars, they turn straight into wax to make the honeycomb. And then they uh, lay the eggs, the queen will lay the eggs into those cells. But uh, it all happens in an orderly progression. That first the cells get built, and they don't need pollen during that time, except some of them will bring pollen back and store some. This bee right here is being in, was being investigated by another bee a moment ago to see what it had and it looked like it did have some pollen and it was admitted into the hive so the bee there's some guard bees up here that'll check they'll look at these other bees to see what they're doing and if they're the right bees coming back to the hive based on some smell if they're supposed to be in the other hive this bee will, the bees here will kick them out tell them to get out of there wrong hive go away or they'll admit them into the inner hive to bring in. Now there's some kind of a strange fly, a, a house fly right there. Mm -hmm. But these bees are not allowing in. They're bopping it, telling it to go away. And that, that fly is probably trying to get at the sugar. And uh, they're not going to allow it. All right, so we're done out here feeding these guys today. There's that fly coming back. They just chased it off. One of them did. Mm -hmm. So apparently a never-ending task to keep the uh, pests out. You see, that fly right there is being chased by the other bees. Now the bees just keep it out of here. All right, so we're done here. We're going to wrap this up. Look over here at this hive, and. Uh, they seem to be a little more subdued. Hopefully their queen is still in there. Hopefully their queen's in there doing what she's supposed to be doing. But I didn't do something like lose her the one and only time I was in there. Hopefully not. I've heard that they get very agitated if they don't have a queen. They don't seem to be agitated much. They seem to be 
just somewhat subdued at the moment. Mm, that looks like a. They would be storing it for the day when uh, when the uh, eggs had grown grown big enough into larvae to eat it. All right, we're done here. Bye.